James Duffy here with a combined unboxing and build video featuring the new FAI competition starter set from Galactic Manufacturing. This set will allow you to build two complete airframes for parachute, streamer, or helicopter duration as flown in Federation Aeronautique International Competition. With the FAI World Championships for Space Models coming to the United States in 2023, this is a timely arrival, especially for those who lack the specialized tooling to make the 40 millimeter airframe specified in the international rules. Now in the spirit of full disclosure, I should state up front that this starter set is a group project headed by Galactic Manufacturing head honcho Mike Nowak. The kit was designed by Steve Crystal, who is a previous medalist in the S6 streamer duration event. There are some vacuform nose cones we're going to see in a moment, and those were produced by Kevin Johnson and Jim Filler. Mike also did the original assembly instructions, and I tweaked those instructions a little bit at his request. Mike also designed and printed the nifty little fin alignment guide that we're going to see in a bit, and then boxes the whole thing up for shipment. We also need to discuss what is not included in this kit, which is a recovery system. The basic airframe can be used for either the FAI parachute duration event called S3, the S6 streamer duration event, or the S9 helicopter duration event. Each of these recovery systems are specialized for FAI competition, so they need to be purchased, built, and installed separately. I've got some experience with the S3 parachute event, so I'll provide some guidance on that at the end of this video. Other US team members will probably be putting together separate videos on the streamer and helicopter recovery systems. Let's take a look at what's in the box. We'll start with the instruction sheet. This is not the final instruction sheet that's being worked on in parallel with this unboxing video. These are very delicate airframes, so they are wrapped in tissue. They're underneath here. First thing I'm gonna pull out is one of the nose cone sets. I'll set the box to the side. Again, there are two kits inside each box. This little baggie here contains the shock cord. There's a generous amount of, I think that's probably 100 pound test Kevlar. And then a styrene vacuformed nose cone. These again are produced by Kevin Johnson and Jim Filler. They vacuform these using a dental vacuform machine over a custom mandrel and then trim them to size. Next up, we have two fin sets. Again, packaged in bubble wrap. These are laser cut by Mike at Galactic Manufacturing. They are 1 16th inch balsa and they are perfect for what we need. Finally, we have two airframe tubes wrapped in tissue. This design was put together by Steve Crystal, a US team member of many years. This is a light card stock that Steve has identified as ideal for this. Normally, FAI models are made out of fiberglass, but there's really no way to mass produce that on the scale needed to get people into FAI space modeling. So what Steve has done is print the paper and then he assembles all of this over an aluminum mandrel. The uh, upper section is on a 40 millimeter section. There's a cone section that gets rolled and then there's a section of standard 13 millimeter motor mount tube here at the back. This entire assembly is pre-assembled and ready to use. Now also packaged inside this airframe tube are a couple of foam plugs. I'm gonna use a dowel to push them out. The foam plugs 
are used as essentially an ejection piston for the parachute and streamer variants of these models. And they're also used as the nose cone shoulder. We're going to epoxy one of these in place as a nose cone shoulder. We may make it a little bit shorter before we do that though. Also contained inside the competition starter set is a fin jig. This is a really neat tool that Mike has developed to help you align your fins properly. It's simply inserted over the aft end of the motor mount and then the fins can be inserted into place one at a time and glued into place. It's really a neat idea. Let's begin construction of our first airframe kit, starting with the nose cone assembly. I've got here a foam plug, the vacuform nose cone section, the shock cord, and a toothpick, all that were included with the kit. I also have a ruler and an X-Acto blade. Just off camera, I've also got some five minute epoxy that we're going to mix up in just a moment. Now, I find that this foam plug is just a little bit too long for my taste for use as a nose cone shoulder. So I'm going to trim it down quite a bit. It's roughly two inches long, so I've placed a mark at the halfway point, the one inch point. I'm going to insert that into the airframe tube, and I'm going to use the edge of the airframe tube to extend that line all the way around the shoulder. This will give me a cut line for trimming the part down. We're done there. Now I'm going to use my X-Acto blade to cut through the foam plug along that line. If you use a fresh blade, this will go very smoothly. It doesn't quite go all the way through, but you can just twist it and it will come apart. I'll set one half of that to the side. We're done with our blade and we're done with our ruler. Next, we're going to use our toothpick to create a hole through the center of one of the foam plugs. Now getting the end of our shock cord through that hole can be a little tricky. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to glue the shock cord to the end of the toothpick and use the toothpick to help us pull it through the hole. We'll hit that with some accelerator. Effectively, we've created a needle and a thread. And it goes right through. Just cut the end off, and we're ready to move on. The next thing we're going to do is to tie the shock cord around the midpoint of the toothpick. We'll create a couple of simple loop knots. And then we'll pull that tight against the top of the nose cone shoulder. Next, we'll mix up some five minute epoxy and anchor this to the top of the nose cone shoulder. And 
Next, I'll use some nippers to trim off the excess bits of the toothpick. Put a little bit of the five minute epoxy on the inside of the vacuform nose cone component. And insert the shoulder into place with a twisting motion. Let that set up for a few moments and your nose cone is complete. Let's get our fins ready for installation. They're packaged in these bubble wrap envelopes. Already cut for you. Now it's important to identify which edge needs to be sanded and which doesn't. This is the leading edge of the fin right here. Note that the grain runs parallel to that leading edge. We'll want to round this edge and the trailing edge. You can also round the tip edge if you like. It's very important that that root edge stay flat, however. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got two sanding blocks, one with 240 grit sandpaper and one with 400 grit sandpaper. We'll start with the 240 grit. Shouldn't take much sanding, just sand until the char is removed. This is the trailing edge we're sanding now. I'm going to go ahead and sand the root edge, the edge that will attach to the airframe, flat. Just a few passes until most of the char is removed. Okay, they've each been sanded with the 240 grit paper. Now we'll go to the 400 grit paper. Now that the edges have been sanded, I'll lightly sand the faces of the fins with the 400 grit paper. There we go, we're ready to install our fins. Let's install our fins. Before we do that though, let me show a little design quirk of an FAI airframe to you. Ideally, we want to install our fins not at the base of the motor mount tube, but about a quarter inch to a half inch forward of that line. There's a good reason for that. When we install our motor, here's a standard 13 millimeter motor, we want to leave enough room to get a wrap of mylar tape around that joint. If the fin was installed at the aft end of the motor mount tube, that would be very difficult to do. Fortunately, our fin jig is designed to do just that. It will position the fins so that they are well forward of the aft end of the motor mount tube. Let's get started. Our first little task is to install the fin jig in place. We're going to test fit a fin and it fits beautifully into the fin jig. The next thing we'll do is install some medium CA adhesive, a very light joint of it, on the root edge of the fin. We're going to fillet these fins later, so all we need to focus on right now is positioning the fin accurately. Be very careful, also, that you don't get any adhesive on the fin jig. That would not be good. 
Okay, we are in place. I'm going to touch that with just a little bit of CA accelerator. And we're golden. We can move on to our next VIN. Same process. And our final fin. We'll let the adhesive set up for a few moments. And now we can remove our jig. And our fins are perfectly aligned. We still need to reinforce the fin joints and we'll apply some fillets here in a moment. First, we need to talk about shock cords. There are a couple different schools of thought with regard to shock cords on these models. For both the S3 Parachute and S6 Streamer models, the current practice is to run the shock cord on the outside of the model, not on the inside like one would do with the Sport model. Perhaps the simplest way to do that is with what's called a lariat loop. And that's just a simple loop tied on the end of the shock cord through which a motor is threaded. And then the motor is inserted into the back of the model. A piece of mylar tape is then wrapped around that to complete the installation. My preferred method, on the other hand, is to drill a hole in the base of one of the fins I'm using a 1 16th inch drill bit here. I then use a loop of thread to pull the shock cord through the hole. Next, I tie a knot and snug that up against the fin. I then lay that in the fin root and apply the first of my fin fillets. Our fin fillets are just standard medium CA glue followed by a little bit of accelerator. This kills two birds with one stone. I'll go ahead and reinforce this fin as well. We'll trim that off in a moment. Now we can trim off this excess bit of shock cord. Finally, we'll want to anchor the shock cord about the midpoint of the airframe tube. You can use either a tape disc or a piece of mylar tape. And with that, basic construction of our 40 millimeter FAI competition airframe is complete. You'll next need to install a recovery system of some type, either a parachute, a streamer, or a helicopter recovery system. I'll guide you through parachute installation now. Let's talk about using our new airframes for the S3 parachute duration event. Now the preferred canopy material for that event is quarter mil mylar. In the United States, this is available from aerospace specialty products, both as uncut sheets and pre-cut canopies. Mylar is preferred for a number of reasons, but number one on the list is good visibility. While thin plastic materials like dry cleaner bags can make perfectly competitive parachutes, they disappear in the skies pretty quickly. The mylar, on the other hand, turns dark and glints in the sun even at a distance. Never forget that getting your rocket back is a big part of the S3 parachute duration challenge. Another big advantage of mylar is that it does not take a set after folding, unlike plastic. 
the convenience of being able to fold your parachute in a windless room the night before a contest beats the heck out of trying to fold a chute on the field. I've cut this 36 inch canopy out of a sheet of uncut mylar and we're going to attach 16 shroud lines around the perimeter. I use a nylon thread designed for attaching ferrules to fishing rods for this, although simple cotton thread should work. The advantage of the nylon thread is that it's less likely to snag on itself or the canopy during deployment. We've zoomed in a bit for the next step. Our shroud lines will be 55 inches long each, which is one and a half times the diameter of our parachute plus a bit of a fudge factor. To attach the shroud lines, I like to tie a small loop in one end of the line, then tape that to the canopy with a short bit of mylar tape. You can source your tape from aerospace specialty supply, just like the canopies. While this plays out, let's talk a little bit about canopy size. Most FAI S3 competitors use canopies ranging from 30 to 42 inches. The advantage of something in the smaller end of that spectrum is that the chutes tend to open more reliably, but unfortunately your durations tend to suffer a bit. A larger canopy will give you greater hang time, but the reliability goes down. The sweet spot where most competitors seem to end up is a canopy somewhere between 36 inches and one meter. Once we've attached all of our shroud lines, we'll gather them and tie a small knot in the end of the bundle. I like to store my finished parachutes in Ziploc bags filled with a bit of talcum powder. The talcum powder is a simple dry lubricant and it helps keep things from sticking to each other. When it's time to fly, I pull the bundle out of the bag and tie it to the shock cord at a point about one foot or 300 millimeters away from the end of the nose cone. With that, we're all done and ready to go flying. Now, I'll admit that building your airframes and parachutes is the easy part. The real trick to the S3 event is in taking the time to develop your flying and thermal detection skills. You'll find more guidance for that from previous US team members in the International Competition section of the NAR website. Thanks for watching and have a great time flying your new rockets.